Okay, and then testing one, two, you see the meter.
Good afternoon. I would like to welcome you this afternoon to the Library Board of Trustees meeting. Our first agenda item is going to be we're moving uh, number two on the agenda up, and our city clerk will be swearing in our two newly appointed trustees. Great. First, uh, Carolyn, we'll have you get sworn in. You can stand up. Oh, if family and friends are here, if you want to come down and take pictures, it's totally fine. Yeah, <laughs> go for it. Once you got your position, take your time and worry about what's going on. All right. So you're just going to repeat after me, raise your right hand, and say, I. I. State your name. Carol Elizabeth Clemens. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. I will support and defend. I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. I will bear true faith, I will bear true, true faith and, allegiance and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California. I take this obligation freely, I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation, without any mental reservation or, purpose of evasion, or purpose of evasion, and I will well and, I will well and, faithfully, and faithfully discharge the duties, discharge the duties upon which I'm about, about to enter. Congratulations, welcome board. Thank you so much. John will uh, have a chance to do the same thing, and if you have family or friends who want to take a picture, by all means, it'd be great. All right. Excellent. You, to your favor, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I. I. State your name. John Schwab. Do, uh, do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I'll support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. I will bear true faith. I will bear true faith. And allegiance. And allegiance. To the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. I take this obligation freely. I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. For purpose of evasion, or purpose of evasion. And, I will well and I will well and faithfully, and faithfully discharge, the duties discharge the duties upon which, upon which I am about to enter. I am about to enter. Congratulations. Thank Welcome aboard. Great. Thank you very much. I'm going to deviate just a second or two from our regular agenda, and I'm going to ask both John and Carolyn to just give us a very quick update of their resume, so to speak. We want to congratulate both of them, both of them and welcome them to our board. And we'd like to know just a little bit about you. So Carolyn, we'll let you go first. Great, wonderful. So uh, I'm Carolyn Clemens. Uh, I was born and raised in San Diego. Um, attended the University of San Diego where I majored in political science and French, minored in accounting. After that, I went to work for uh, a, a mortgage firm where I sold mortgages, uh, then decided that that wasn't really for me. Um, went over to the East Coast and did my graduate degree in security studies with Georgetown University. So that was within their school of foreign service. Um, and uh, since then, I have been working in project management for um, uh, companies that work for the defense department. So right now, I serve as a project manager uh, for Northrop Grumman's Aerospace Systems. Thank you very much. John? Hi, John Schwab, also a native of San Diego, uh, graduate of San Augustine High School. I uh, did my undergraduate degree at the uh, University of San Francisco in operations management with a minor in chemistry. Uh, after two years in the Army, I came back and did a couple small business things and then went to work for solar turbines and procurement. After that, for Pacific Southwest Airlines and procurement. And during that time, I also got my master's at the University of uh, San Diego State University, it wasn't back then, uh, in uh, finance with a, a uh, emphasis in institutional finance. I've seen a lot of similarities here. <laughs> uh, 
I uh, spent the majority of my career in aerospace uh, after moving to Dallas working for a, a business a company that's now owned by Boeing. Uh, I switched over to project management and sales and marketing, which is where I spent the rest of my career working for Aurora Industries uh, and working for a smaller aerospace company up in Corona, uh, where I, when I left that business in 2003, we were we're just finishing up moving up here to Escondido, where we've been since the year 2000. Uh, I've had a couple of small businesses in here in town locally uh, up until a few years ago, where I guess I'm officially using the R word now and uh, trying to be involved in the community with the Chamber of Commerce, uh, just in time Foster Youth, and now with the Library Board. Thank you, John. Well, welcome to both of you. We really appreciate it. Uh, your, your service and uh, your backgrounds look like you will be a great asset to our library board. Thank you. You all uh, received a copy in advance of the minutes of our meeting held on March 14th. Are there any additions or corrections? Otherwise, I would need a motion for approval of those minutes. I so move. It's been moved by Elmer and seconded by Carolyn. What? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, so we're using the uh, touch, touch system for that, so uh, moved by uh, it's trustee. Hard, it's hard to teach old dogs new tricks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not used to having this in front of me. That's really nice. All right. Anyway. We're very pleased uh, that you pointed that out. Anyway, all uh, at this time, would you please vote? Elmer. Oh, this is a maybe the button's off, but I see these indicating yes. So it's a motion approved 5 0. Current uh, business. Our next item is the update on the volunteer community outreach liaison. And uh, Elmer, you're the one that's uh, monitoring this. Um, yes, and I'll perhaps maybe uh, take a few minutes to help our trustees understand what this is all about. Thank you. Um, some, uh, some months ago, the Board of Trustees uh, discussed the problem if it is a problem. But the reality is that even though we have a lot of people coming in every day, maybe a thousand or whatever, um, there's a lot of repetition of the same people coming into the library. And uh, we made the assumption that because we have such a large community, but 154, whatever thousand, but, uh, um, there are a lot of people who live in Escondido and have lived here for some time haven't been in the library. And so their perception might be, uh, based on their earlier experience with either a you know, young person or a long time ago. And libraries, as we know, have changed significantly. We thought it would be um, a good idea to have some, some sort of program where we uh, help reach, to reach the people who we assume don't come to the library at all, or tell them to come to the library, uh, to reach them and bring them into the library. We were convinced that a lot of people who haven't been in the library will be amazed at what they see, computers, technology, just a, a, a host of things that are very, uh, very much used by the people who do come in the library. So, we created a, a subcommittee. Uh, the term of it is uh, on an outreach liaison program. That's the kind of subcommittee. And so we sought uh, uh, to find out if there would be any volunteers who would like to be on that committee. And we were very fortunate to have two people. First, we have a, a, a person who has a long business background, and she's also an active member on the board of the Friends of the Library. So she is very conversant with what's going on in the library. And then the other person is relatively new, but she has a great background, so she, she's uh, also on the committee. I serve as the, the trustee contact with this committee. But one of the things that uh, we want to educate the public about is all of the services that are in 
So anyway, the, um, the idea is basically to train these two volunteers, train them in the sense of they need to know what's going on in life. So when they reach out to the public, um, they're conversing with all of their services. And their task would be to bring in small groups, large groups, whatever uh, people would be willing to come in and spend uh, a little bit of time learning what's going on in the library. And that would be coordinated with uh, the library volunteer, the uh, Cookie Allen, who is the coordinator on staff, a volunteer. She is, uh, she has consented to help train these two people. So she is now going through the process of training our two people who are on this committee to tell them what's going on in the library. Uh, I think I may have been redundant in saying this, but I, I'll say it again anyway. I learned when we started this program, when I started talking to the staff to about it and so forth, there's a lot going on. The staff, they're out in the community educating the public. And I think that's a truth to the library, librarian and the staff because they're doing a wonderful job and the public gives them an idea of what's going on and so forth. Anyway, that's where we are right now. We're just beginning to say their role to be is to be educated and then they will start reaching out to various groups and organizations and trying to encourage them or encourage them to come in and give their well, Elmer, wasn't this pointed out to us very vividly when we did the strategic plan, when we started going out in those meetings, and we discovered that some very well-educated people in our community that really didn't realize all the services that were going on in the library. One question I have for you, will she, I think it's a she, the, one, the lady I interviewed was a she, so will she go out into the community and like take a program also, uh, as opposed to just inviting people? Not at this time, but that may be something perhaps in the future. Because for example, today I got a request from uh, a corporate insurance from a women's organization. And she said, we'd like to have a program and we'd like to have someone come out and tell us about that. Well, I work, I'll be working with staff regarding that kind of thing and so forth. So the focus once again is to bring, is to bring people into the building that perhaps have not been in the building and would be able to them some days. And then they would be communicators to other people. By the way, I've been in the building and what's going on. Well, one of the things that I'm always most impressed with in our library is the 200 plus volunteers because I see them not only as doing a great deal of work in servicing our library, but they're our key communicators. Those people do not go out in the library in the community and never talk about what they're doing in their, in their work capacity as volunteers. And so I think all of this fits in with one of the goal, major goals of the board, which was marketing. And I, and I want to compliment the staff on all the different things that they've been doing the last year and a half that relate to marketing. And I think some of that is actually in the director's report uh, this week, this, uh, this meeting. Ron, I would invite the uh, trustees, all trustees, if you know of anyone who might be interested in volunteering today on that outreach committee, uh, we'd love to talk to them and explain you know, what the program's about and hopefully they might join in. Because the more people we have on that committee, the greater opportunity of reaching bigger organizations. Does anybody else have a question or comment for Elmer? Elmer, thank you for monitoring this. I think that this has a lot of possibilities. Oh, Eric? Elmer, so do, do you have a person already that uh, is going to do it? To go out into the community yeah. or? Linda, Linda Palmer. Okay. who is uh, on the board of directors for the Friends of the Library Board, very active, she volunteers and so forth, and has business experience in the past as well. So she has volunteered to be the chair of the committee. The other person I mentioned is also a new member on, on, uh, with the Friends of the Library, and we talked to them in the shop and stuff like that. So that, they're the two that are beginning with them, and they will outreach 
And, and who's going to do the training in uh, Fordham? Uh, Cookie Allen, who is the volunteer coordinator. She's going to coordinate the training of the people. In other words, she will be the liaison to the staff, the doctors. That's one of the, uh, one of the key persons on staff and talk about how do we educate these people. And also, uh, Cookie will be the will be the, uh, I don't want to say monitor, but one of the things we want to avoid is that our two volunteers will get very excited about doing this, um, start reaching out too quickly and asking all staff members to get involved. And so the way we're working is that, no, you reach out to the staff through Cookie Allen, who would have sensitivity to the you know, staff just is just sitting around waiting for things to do. <laughs> So we're, we're going to, they're going to learn, and we're all going to, I'm going to learn. If I've been in this building for, in the building for a number of years, and I walk around, my goodness, I, something's going on, the services, you know. Actually, yeah, that, that's that's great. Actually, I would like to be part of it as well, to, to learn. And I think the new trustees as well, and, and uh, I would be, well, I guess it would be good for all trustees to, to know what's going on, and, and uh, be up to date with all the programs that, that we offer. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and all of us, not necessarily being liaisons to the community, but we are the face of the library too, as trustees. So that falls on us as well to, to educate the public. It, whether we do it individually or in groups, so so to know exactly what's going on and what's offered currently by the library would be very helpful to all of us. Thank you, thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Our next agenda item is the strategic plan process. Uh, Patricia. Oh, actually, Omar, thank you for that. It's a good segue into this. In front of you, you will see um, several pages of the uh, update. And per the board's direction at the March meeting, uh, we, you had given me your updated priorities. So those are listed and are uh, marketing, the program development and outreach, the Hispanic outreach, literacy, and then safety and security. Within the strategic plan process, um, above each one of those categories, you'll see the goal that it connects to. And I have a show and tell. For the board members who are new to the board, you will be receiving a lengthy Excel spreadsheet document, which is the outline strategic plan goals and priorities as well. And for the board members who recognize this, I will bring for the next meeting. Um, you had also suggested maybe quarterly having this updated so you can kind of go along and keep track of this yourselves. I will have those copies for you then at the May meeting so you can kind of take care of that. Um, I will update it as to where we are at this point, but then if you want to monitor it or go through it with this list, that's, you know, that's you're, you're planning and organizing priority um, and preferences, but we'll have that for you and I will email that to you as well, okay? We also talked about keeping them here so you don't have to bring them back and forth. Um, we can do that if that's okay with Zach, or I can bring them to and from the library for each board meeting. We can decide the logistics of that, whatever works best. So, the actual uh, bullet points here that you see are just a drop in the bucket. They're not everything that our staff does on a regular basis. Um, these aren't the things that are necessarily programmed in on our events calendar or on our web page. So these are the things that we actually are going out to. These are the events that are in the community. These are the groups and organizations and schools that have invited us in. Um, and they're also the places that we have invited ourselves into and that we are welcome and are asked to return. So I can go over these in, in detail if you want to, but I just really want to emphasize the fact that 
at least two to four times a week, including Sundays and evenings and Saturdays, we have staff members going out into the community, and this is kind of the, the general snapshot of that. We also are looking at revamping some of the things that have been long-standing programs, and it's not that we are taking them away, we are actually enhancing them and expanding them. So different staff members have taken on different responsibilities and duties per either their interest and or the community's needs. So you'll, you'll see things under especially um, the Hispanic outreach priority. We have a couple of different staff members who are really making sure that's one of their top priorities and it's one of their passions. So we're, we're increasing and we're also just changing the way things are done a little bit for some of the book discussion groups and uh, the Spanish selection in the library itself. Next time you're in, please either wander through or ask one of the staff members. And we are expanding that collection. So you'll see some furniture being moved and some shelves that are currently bare, but that's because we are expanding and moving and shifting the collection. So those are the sort of things that go on as well as the things uh, that we take out to the community and events. And if you're ever interested, too, I can show you a snapshot of a, kind of just one of our daily or monthly calendars of what that looks like for everybody that's involved in that. And I also want to make note that this is everybody on the staff. Anybody who's interested in going out, including the customer service staff and library associates, everybody who's interested has that opportunity. And it has been uh, very rewarding for the staff. It's developed a team as well as gotten people into the community that may not have otherwise had that opportunity uh, represented in the library. So it's been very positive all around. So any questions or comments? I'm glad and interested to hear. Ron, can I add, it's Joanna. Um, I'd like to add just a couple, two things that I just um, got an update on today that even Patricia doesn't know about yet. So Deputy City Manager William Wolf just gave me an update that the Rangers will be starting at the library on May 1st, which is next Wednesday. Hooray. So yeah, we're very happy about that, and we appreciate the partnership with the um, Lakes and Open Space Superintendent who's making that happen very quickly. So that's a positive update. And the other um, thing I'd like to update you on is the fact that we have installed new signage today on the library campus that cites the municipal code section that authorizes the library campus to be considered a recreational area, and therefore when the facility is closed, the campus is closed. This helps to improve the enforcement ability of both the rangers and the police when there are loiterers who are on the campus outside of our open hours. So those are two steps that, we've, that we're taking in the right direction to improve the safety and security as well. Well, I want to thank Mr. Wolf. Uh, I thought our meeting last, our last meeting was the most uh, uplifting potential solution to this problem for a long time. Because I realized that uh, homelessness is not a problem of the library, it's, it's a problem for all of us. But we've been uh, kind of around this problem and none of us have known exactly what to do. Add more security guards, add more. He, he gave us more hope that there was a potential plan that could really improve this. And I think the fact that the Rangers have a lot more ability to handle this problem, a lot more training, they've done it before. So I just want to thank uh, him. I want to thank you because this is one of the things that when the community, I go to Rotary and a couple of people will come up and talk to me about the, the homelessness problem at the library. And I haven't had a whole lot of things that I could tell them that gave them much hope. But this was a really uplifting thing if you would pass along to him my appreciation because I really think that, uh, that we may have a good start on on starting to solve this problem. Also, just a reminder, if you haven't seen it, at the April, I think it was the 10th City Council meeting, I gave a PowerPoint presentation update on all of the security improvements that have been made to the library. So if you haven't seen that, or if you would like a copy of that PowerPoint, 
Um, if you get questions from the public about what's happening at the library, what type of steps is the city taking to ensure the safety of staff and volunteers and users, that's a great place to point them because it really shows not only the commitment from the city, but also from the Escondido Library Foundation, who provided half of the funding to make that happen. And that was really a comprehensive um, assessment of the campus itself. So it wasn't just security cameras, which there, there are obviously new and upgraded and many, many more security cameras than we ever had in the past, but it was also lighting improvements. It was um, improvements to the facility itself through kind of this lens of um, crime prevention through environmental design. So we worked with PD to identify areas of the facility that were um, creating inadvertent spaces for people to do unwanted things. So we really took steps to close those off, to make sure the landscaping is trimmed and it doesn't encourage people to stash stuff or you know, sleep in certain areas. So again, I encourage you to go back to that council meeting, watch the video, um, watch the presentation, and point people to it if you continue to qu get questions about that. I just wanted to add that uh, uh, I was out sitting out there at the, the last council meeting, uh, library meeting, uh, when this uh, plan was proposed, and uh, very happy to see the city and LSNS step up. Um, they LSNS, but they put in money that is beyond the contract to, to help out here. Uh, I might suggest could we maybe take a look at how things are going 30, 60 days in after this this program starts and. and, and uh, See, we'll see what we, uh, if we're totally 100% happy or, or, or if any modification can be made at that time. Any other comments? Patricia, how many, we have 48 hours now, I notice. How many did we have before? 37 and a half. So we not only increased their capabilities, but we increased the number of hours that we have uh, support there. So that, that also is a big plus. Yeah. Ron, if I may. Oh, Joanna, if you could email that uh, PowerPoint presentation to us, it would be great. So we have it as well. S since we're on the subject, can I bring this up too now? Or there's two comments here. Well, one is from March 25th, which is about a month ago. So hopefully this will be taken care of. Again, the outside of library is very disgusting. Homeless people and trash. Very poor conditions for Escondido. So hopefully this, now with a new ranger starting, we will be able to take care of this pro uh, problem. And the second comment is the uh, inside of the library. The smell of this library is so terrible, I would think to be healthy, and pleasant for employees and visitors, it needs to be addressed. Do, you, do you, any of you know what uh, this may mean? Or We do, and uh, we can elaborate a little bit on that too. So those are ongoing concerns that we hear, and what we have done about it along, obviously, with City is that our carpets are deep cleaned every six months, so everything is taken off the floor, deep cleaned, um, we have, through our janitorial service, implemented some, not air fresheners, but air deodorizers as well. And we also, and Joanna, if you want to talk more about the, uh, the study that Mike had done. So our building maintenance superintendent also called out an expert to do an air quality test. So we're just awaiting the results of that, and obviously we'll take action on anything that is discovered as a result of that test. We're also looking into possible um, different filters in the HVAC system or um, air scrubbers if that's a necessity. So we take these concerns very seriously. But I think what's important to remember as well is that these comments are a reflection of a single point in time. So that person happens to come in on March 25th and sees trash outside of the library. Um, if you drove through the library, drove past the library this morning as I did, it was pristine and there was nothing out there. So, you know, we take all of these concerns and comments very seriously, but I also encourage you to kind of take them with a grain of salt because um, your perception of something in that moment of time could be very different than someone else's. We well, also I also want the, the new board members to know that when we get 
these comments, Patricia will call or communicate with these people. But in this particular case, that comment was anonymous. Mm -hmm. And when you have an anonymous comment, it's a little different. It's not that we ignore it, but we can't communicate with the person. And so I wanted you to know that Patricia, she, she communicates and gets in touch with anyone who makes a, uh, a concern or a complaint who leaves some way to communicate with them. Correct. We also uh, have a very good working relationship with Public Works, and the staff is very diligent and aware of what that outside of the building looks like. Uh, and anytime we see anything, if people have stashed things, if there are carts sitting that are unattended, you know, we, we call Public Works, and that's taken care of within usually a half an hour to an hour at the most. So that, that it's an ongoing issue. Uh, we are a public space. We're open seven days a week. Trash will happen. Um, but we try to make sure that that gets taken care of, and, and Public Works is very responsive to all of that as well. And likewise, Ron, to your comment about Patricia responding, um, she's also very good about forwarding those comment cards to me. And if there's an issue that is really a city issue, it's not so much a library issue, then I step in re and respond if someone provides their contact information or specifically related to the comments around homelessness. We've been asking Deputy City Manager William Wolf to respond to those because he really is our sort of central point of contact for what's being done across the city. And we want to make sure that people know that he is the contact around that and that he can really address things from a bigger picture perspective. Awesome. I, I have a Go ahead. Hit your mic. Oh, I, I think it is on. Um, how, how do we uh, communicate like results of the you know, air quality study or to the public at large? Like We are taking steps mm -hmm. when we get these comment cards. Um, how do we communicate that that's happening so that people know that things are going on? It's a really interesting question, <laughs> Trustee Clemens. Um, you know, it's a little bit of a double-edged sword because we receive maybe a handful of comments in this vein, whereas we have 1,400 people who visit our facility every single day on average. So we don't want to make a bigger deal out of something that maybe is only an issue to that handful of people who are particularly sensitive to it or are um, very vocal about things. So it's there's not really a great answer to that. I mean, we obviously we would work very very closely with the staff and let them know, particularly if nothing is found. You know, it's it's not really an issue to to make out of. Um, on the other hand, if something is found, we want to address that, and we would address that very quickly. But we don't necessarily want to create um, concern or worry amongst the public. So. Um, I don't really have a direct answer to your question, but there, I, mean, I, I wouldn't advocate that we put this out on social media or through our newsletter or something like that. Um, it, it probably is most effective in these kinds of conversations where people who are really concerned about what's happening at the library likely are listening to these meetings or attending these meetings and hearing more of the in the weeds kind of um, logistical discussions about what we do to maintain the facility and things like that. Um, is my mic on? Oh, thanks. Uh, I don't know, Joanna, either you or Trisha might uh, respond to this. Um, it has to do with the, the, um, the visibility as people walk into the library. And one thing, uh, I walk in for some time, uh, one of the major pillars uh, that holds the overhead and so forth like that uh, has concrete falling out. It needs repair or at least beautification and so forth. I don't know, maybe there is a plan correct that kind of thing, or is there that? It's the one, it's the thing that when someone walks into the library, you're going to see it, you have to walk right by it. I must commend you though, whoever started it, there is much better cleaning up of messy sidewalk and area. That's, that was a mess for a while, and now there seems to be a problem that cleans things up where the people walk. I'm talking about the well, thank you for bringing that to my attention. I know I've been working with building maintenance, and on the west wall of the library, so the wall that faces the Literacy Learning Center, we recently removed the sod that was in this small strip that butted up against that wall because there were some issues with the sprinklers, and they were essentially damaging the stucco on that wall. 
So it's been replaced with um, like a mulch wood chip kind of surface, which kind of kills two birds with one stone. Number one, it saves water and we're no longer needing to irrigate it, which means that we won't have any future issues with uh, continued damage to the stucco. And it's also a less inviting place to camp or to sleep or to simply loiter on the property. And so the next step in that process, so you can go and see that that's all been replaced right now and it looks great. The next step in that process is that the building maintenance staff will come and do the stucco repair and then they'll repaint the wall. So I'll bring to, to the building maintenance superintendent's attention that there's some stucco on that pillar that also needs to be addressed and I'm sure they can wrap that into the uh, repairs that they're doing on the wall. And Elmer and anybody else who sees that, uh, please report that to us at the library as well. Sometimes we see it, um, other times it's already been reported, so just communicate and it's better to over communicate and we hear it four or five times than not to hear about it at all. Yeah, I, so. I probably uh, incorrectly assume that it's so obvious that someone has reported it, but not as reported. <laughs> Okay, Patricia, we've... I, if I, just one more thing, Ron, if I may. So thank you, Patricia and, and Joanna, for, for the explanation and, and clarifications. Uh, now that we covered the negative stuff, something on a positive note. On April 16th, there is a comment. All of the people working at or volunteering at our Escondido Library are excellent. They are very knowledgeable and very helpful. And everyone is always very friendly. We love the staff at Calmia Library. Thank you. So, thank you, ladies. That one also, when we get those comments, as well as the things that need to be addressed, I do share those with the staff. We have a staff bulletin board that we put it up with, and I email a copy of the PDF to them. And uh, I actually had a couple of staff members say, thanks for sharing that with us, too, because it's good to hear. So, thanks. Merrick, thanks for pointing that out. That, that's one of my pet peeves. Is, uh, people who spend all their time dealing with the negatives and don't spend time on the positives. And we know how hard our staff works. And we really do as a board need to, to, to keep that in mind all the time. And so thanks for bringing that up, I appreciate it. So Patricia, we have covered pretty well the safety and security. You talked about marketing. Uh, I'm, I'm back on the uh, strategic plan. Uh, you talked quite a bit about outreach. Uh, I'd like to talk just a minute about what I think is one of the lighthouse programs in our library, and I want everybody in town to know about it, and that's our literacy program. Uh, if anyone ever has a chance to go to their banquet at the end of the year, you will absolutely leave there as a big proponent of our literacy program. It really is outstanding. And so I thought we might discuss that just for a little bit. And actually, I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to remind everybody, too, that Learner Recognition Dinner uh, is coming up on May 16th from 6 to 8 p.m. And the new board members, I will make sure that you get that invitation. And the current previous board members should receive that. And uh, please RSVP to Myrna. The Learner Recognition Dinner. So. Same with what we think of the literacy program? Yes. Yeah. Yep. And that is just, uh, Ron can attest to some of the, the testaments of the people who have gone through the program. And I just want to remind everybody, too, that the literacy uh, program itself is staffed by one full time person and one part time person with our senior librarian who also. Um, kind of oversees youth services as well as literacy. So when you look at these numbers, the number of learners, and this is, you know, through March, uh, the learners, the volunteers, the number of instructional hours, and the total volunteer hours, of course, we have awesome volunteers doing that, um, but this is maintained pretty much by 1.5 employees, mm -hmm. and they are amazing. So the Scrabblethon is one of their big not only events, but it's also a fundraiser. The Literacy Friends Board does a lot of the fundraising as well. So um, one of the things that several of our library support boards have been doing is kind of visiting each other's board meetings. And I would encourage you to take a look at the schedules of those. And if you're interested, I, I can share those with you as well. 
but I'm sure they would be very pleased to meet you and just get to know the new people on the board as well. So we have quite a few different support groups, and uh, like I say, I can issue that invitation as well too. So please do. So as you can see, uh, this is almost one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, it's that we have that many volunteers, and uh, for those of you who who are very fluent in foreign language, you probably would not appreciate this as much as someone who the toughest course I ever had to take was my college required two years of foreign language. Well, uh, I I at that point gained a great deal of respect for people who are proficient in foreign language, but these are people, in many cases, who are not proficient in any language. And they want to learn so bad that they, uh, they go and they meet with a tutor. Uh, these are one-on-one -on -one tutors. It's a phenomenal program. It does phenomenal things, and I think uh, uh, the library and the library board should be uh, waving their flag anytime we can because it's such a unique, wonderful program. Thank you. And if anybody would like to take a tour of the Literacy Center or just meet with uh, Myrna and Sheila and, and maybe Dan just to hear what they do on a, a little bit more ground level kind of daily basis, please let me know and we can arrange those meetings. Uh, I think that would be beneficial for everybody involved just to, to see and hear that kind of thing. Uh, the other item that I was interested in, I'm very pleased with, is, uh, you know, we, as Elmer was talking, we, we talk a lot about what happens at the library. But I, before I got on this board, I had no idea how much happens out in the community as a result of this library. And so as you look at this goal, connect through marketing, uh, outreach through in-library programs, and you look at all of the things, I just call your attention to all of those things that, uh, that go on that are a direct result of this library and our staff. And so it's a, it's a wonderful positive. Thank you. And I do want to give a little shout out, obviously, to the uh, friends of the library who do a lot of actual financial support for a lot of these programs that enables our, our staff to buy uh, different types of materials for the crafts. It allows for uh, materials for our 3D printer. Um, it allows for you know, snacks for the teens. So those are really important things, and we definitely appreciate that, that support from the friends. So thank you. So Patricia, do you have anything else to report on the strategic plan? Just that every day. In every possible way, um, this is happening. So, thank you. Okay, our next item is the library director's report. So, just a few, a few things to add. Again, I want to remind you that that learner recognition dinner that we were just talking about, um, if you haven't already added it to your calendar, is happening on May sixteenth, the six to eight p.m. So, please, hopefully, we'll see you there. And just uh, some staffing updates. Our new library associate, who will be working primarily as a page, is starting the week of May 6th, and his name is Pedro Lopez, and we are very happy to have him coming on board. And we are in the interview process and screening process for the open position of Librarian 2 for Adult Services. So, yeah, that about wraps that part of it up. Any other questions about anything? Right, um, maybe either now or later. Did we get an update on the process of the selection of a new librarian and where that is now and to what degree the, the trustees become involved in that process? So the last update that I received, there were four candidates who had um, been elevated to the level that they were being interviewed by some of the top LSNS staff, and they will narrow that candidate pool down to the top one or two, if there really are two excellent candidates. At that point, um, we will have an opportunity to meet them, myself and you guys on the board, 
and it'll be very similar to the process we went through when we were bringing Patricia on board, where you have an opportunity to ask questions and to provide your feedback, likely through me, and then I would share that with LSNS staff who are um, handling the interview process. So if you have any major concerns or um, red flags, you know, that's an opportunity to be able to provide that feedback, and then we would work with LSNS to either resolve those issues or if it's a misunderstanding or, or continue the search. Right. And I, I think the timeline on that is probably by the end of May. I, I, uh, I appreciate. Right. So by the next board, by the May board meeting, we would hope to have um, the candidates to be able to introduce. I really appreciate that because I cannot tell you how many people ask me because obviously we had a contentious issue in the city or the uh, privacy, uh, making, uh, uh, privatizing our library. And the question that I'm always asked is, do you have anything to do with hiring the librarian? Well, Patricia turned out so well that, I, of course, I said, absolutely, I hired her. <laughs> No, but that, that is, I was shocked at how many people wanted to know because I think the community thinks that a major job of the Library Board of Trustees is to have some input in the hiring of our leader. And so since we were able to do that with Patricia, I was always able to say, yes, we, we did have an opportunity to meet and ask. So I really appreciate the fact that we're going to get that opportunity again. Yeah, and I really give LSNS credit for that because, I mean, to the letter of the contract, LSNS is responsible for the staffing of the library. So, you know, it, it's out of goodwill and a willingness to want to have input from the board and from the city through my participation that they're allowing this process to move forward the way that it has. It's a unique situation for a board to be this involved in the vetting of a candidate for a position, like a director level position. Um, there are no other city boards that are really involved in this kind of process when it comes to other city level directors. So I think that you should feel very grateful to be involved in the process. I certainly do. And um, I just want to give LSNS credit for that as a business practice. Thank you. Any other items, Patricia? The only thing I do want to remind and or clarify uh, with the board is just previously and per the bylaws, the May board meeting is when you'll be voting for the president and the secretary. Okay. Do we have any other questions or comments? I just wanted to let everybody know that uh, for a meeting schedule for June, I won't be able to attend. So. If we are going to have a quorum, then we should be fine. Otherwise, if you guys like to reschedule it, let me know. Thank you. Thank you. That's a really excellent reminder. Thank you, Trustee Gorney. Um, if any of you are planning to travel or you know you're going to be missing future meetings, if you could communicate that in advance to Patricia, and that way, if we do want to look at rescheduling a meeting because there potentially would not be a quorum, it's very helpful to know in advance when you'll be gone. Thank you. Uh, if there's no other business, uh, we need a motion to adjourn. I will motion. Okay, it's been motioned by Clemens and seconded by Gorney. Would you all please vote? We are adjourned. <laughs>